Welcome back to the channel. Today we are building a LoRa APRS TNC uh, or combined LoRa APRS TNC iGate and DigiPeter. We're going to use this to uh, monitor the battery operated uh, DigiPeter that we built a few weeks ago to monitor the battery level of uh, that thing because it's sending that out in uh, beacons every 15 minutes. I think I've uh, collected all the bits that I need uh, right here and uh, we'll put them together. We'll uh, connect them through a, uh, a bandpass filter for uh, 133.775, which is uh, the frequency of LoRa APRS in uh, most of Europe and uh, including Norway. And we'll uh, check it out and see how it works. But uh, first of all, let's assemble this thing. Should be a really simple build. This is a 3D printed case. I'll include some links for that uh, in the description of the video. I've made some uh, modifications to it. This originally had an antenna, room for an antenna connector either on the side or on the top. I didn't want that. I wanted it at the back. So I, uh, I modified this in the slicer, created the uh, recess and the hole for a, uh, a B, uh, SMA to N connector to fit in the back. And uh, also I made some uh, modifications uh, to the front to include some uh, text and some uh, highlights on the two buttons. That's the, uh, the extent of the modifications that I did. So let's uh, start by attaching the, the uh, SMA to N connector in the back here. I didn't bother to create the holes for this, so I figured we could just drill them out, out uh, afterwards and we'll do our best to, uh, to manage that. Let's see. Let's try not to drill into our own fingers. That's one, and I think the best uh, best course of action is to at least put the screws in the holes as we drill them, and uh, go for the next one. Let's see. That was number two. And I can see already that this is not fitting in perfectly straight, but this is on the rear side of the unit anyway, so no one's gonna, no one's gonna see. Of course, you and I, we're gonna know, but uh, that's okay. Once again, keep my finger out of the way. Ooh. The reason I'm putting in the screws is that so when I go to drill the next hole, uh, it won't move around, so I'll, I'll make sure that this, the holes that are already drilled, they uh, they will fit with the uh, with the screws and the connector. So last one. There we go. Ooh. And all the screws are in. Let's do some cleaning up. So we need to find an Allen key that will fit in those. I'm guessing this is the one. Let's see. And there was. Let's see if there room for. Yep. Yeah. There should be room for both. Oh, come on. Should be room for both a washer and a nylock nut on the back side. I'll just enter all of them and we'll uh, tighten them up afterwards. This might be some burrs that it's uh, worthwhile to remove before you put the uh, nylon knots on because uh, if you get them in the threads it's probably going to be no fun tightening up the screws. Next one, go. And uh, yeah, some more burrs. Let's just scrape them off. Uh, 
the last washer and the last nut. So I'll just find some some pliers to hold on to the nuts while we tighten these up. Should be simple enough, I think. And uh, to be honest, one screw would probably be quite sufficient. This is just gonna sit still on a desk, but uh, yeah, for completeness, I, I put all four in. It's gonna look nicer as well. This is the third one. And uh, let's continue on the last screw. go all right it looks all right I think seeing as we now have two female SMA connectors we need some way to fix that so this is a male to male converter I'll just screw that on here and uh, to be honest I haven't checked to see that it's uh, room for it in the enclosure but uh, let's find out now I think that's going to work nicely. Yep. Yeah. So next up, we will try and thread this into place. I think we'll just, uh, it's got these nice recesses here and uh, here for resting in. So let's try to place it where it's supposed to be and uh, force it into position with a, a moderate amount of force, I think. That seemed to do the job. Yeah, and uh, why not remove the protective cover from the screen as well. There we go. Now we'll thread this uh, antenna wire carefully back here and connect it up to to the plug at the back. And now, of course, this is the moment of truth. Is, there, is it uh, room for all this in here? Or uh, no, it isn't. So we will have to find another way of doing that. All right. Luckily, I have a, a plan B, which might not be quite as optimal, but a lot more flexible. So hang on. See, a while ago, I got this uh, SMA male to male patch cables, 10 centimeters. We'll just use one of those and curl it up nicely in here. That's gonna take care of that uh, problem. There we go. And uh, once again, connecting to the board. And uh, let's figure out how we can curl this up in here. Maybe like so. Yeah, that works. And these are just press fits. This is supposed to latch into place and that seemed to be working nicely. And the last uh, moment of truth, of course, is whether or not the front panel will fit. And it seems it will. Very nice. That was indeed quite a quick build. I've uh, shown many times before how to install uh, firmware on these. I'll leave a link to the, uh, the video for the battery operated uh, eye gate that we created, which uh, will show the procedure. So if you want to see me doing that, you can, uh, you can watch that video. Um, if not, then uh, it's probably uh, quite easy to do for yourself. That actually almost, oh, hang on, almost concludes the build. I want to put some nice little rubber feet on this. This, uh, the way it's set up now, it's a little too easily slide around the desk. So I have some uh, nice adhesive, small rubber feet that we can put 
underneath, one in each corner. And the last one. Yeah, it's not exactly a perfect square, but at least now it won't slide around the desk as easy. That was uh, that was a short video. Uh, it's one of my shortest uh, builds, but uh, then again, I wasn't expecting this to take too long. Next video will hopefully be me trying this and connecting it uh, to uh, power, USB power, and to a uh, that's an antenna, but going through this uh, bandpass filter, as I said, for 433.775 megahertz, plus minus nine, uh, 0 0.6 megahertz. Got this from uh, China, uh, I think uh, eBay or AliExpress. Uh, this is, of course, to avoid getting uh, the receiver in this uh, desensed from all the other traffic that's uh, around the same uh, frequency. I've had very good results getting um, using um, bandpass filters, and this is a, a much, much more narrow filter than the other ones I've tried. So I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not this makes uh, any noticeable difference. And uh, also, the plan now is to connect uh, this through an MQTT server. That is, uh, if you're not aware, that's a messaging bus that you can connect uh, things uh, to, including things like Home Assistant and, uh, and uh, a host of other things. So basically, you will get a feed through MQTT of all the messages that this thing receives. So I'm uh, looking forward to looking into that. If you want to see that, then please uh, consider subscribing so you won't miss it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any comments, any suggestions on how to do things differently or anything else you think I should know about this, then please do leave a comment because I'm learning quite a lot from that. Other than that, I will just say until uh, next time, thank you so much for watching.